Welcome to the last of our reflections for Holy Week on Holy Saturday. We start with our prayer. Let us pray. Jesus, as I journey through the last week of your life with you, I see your suffering and pain, but I also have seen all human weakness my weakness, my fears and anxiety that led to betrayal, my ideas of power and glory that allow injustice, my wish to shift the blame, that denial of my responsibility. Jesus, as I work journey with you, May I see your willingness to forgive, to heal, to restore. And may I find new life with you. Amen. And so our reading today is that part where Jesus is taken down from the cross from Mark chapter 15 and verse 42. When evening came, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate, asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he was already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether Jesus had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was indeed dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus saw where the body was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was so angry when I heard what was to happen to Jesus. I had spoken up for him at the consultation with the council, but once I said that I believed this man to be a great teacher and a prophet of the kingdom of God, no one would listen to what I had to say. They were too afraid of what his message might mean for the way we live our lives and our relationship with the authorities. So they washed their hands of him, turning him over to the Roman authorities, who also washed their hands of him, too afraid of the manipulated, angry mob. What else could I have done? I stood with the women in their agony as they watched him die. All our hopes, our dreams, our faith seemed to die with him. Love had been rejected in favour of hatred, life destroyed by cruel death. I stood by them. What else could I do? We couldn't be with him when he died. That hurt. Even if it was our own fear and the jeering mob that kept us at a distance from him in his suffering. But we heard his last cry and knew that he had gone. What will they do with his precious body? One of the women sobbed. I knew then what I had to do. I went to Pilate, explained who I was and asked for the body. He was surprised that Jesus was already dead, but was as keen to wash his hands of the body as he had been of his death. He granted his permission. With help, I took him down from the cross. We held him oh so gently, bathing him with our tears. 
I sent for a length of the finest linen in which to swaddle his broken body. We wrapped him in love, but he was gone. We carried him to a peaceful garden and laid him in a tomb in the rock, a tomb I had bought for my own death. He could rest there. Death was past. There would be no more pain. We closed the entrance to the tomb, rolling a large stone in front of it. It felt like closing a door on the most important chapter of all. But I had made sure that he was safe. What should I do now? Our prayer for Holy Saturday. Let us pray. This is a time of silence and waiting. Do I wait empty, sorrowful, like Joseph, like the women, or am I too busy? There is much to be done. I cannot afford the time to just wait. God of the silence and the waiting, may I rest quietly, confident of your promise of new life, even from the grave. Amen.
thank you for being here for this reflection and for journeying with us through Holy Week and journeying with Jesus to the cross and beyond. As we wait expectantly for Easter Day, let us do so with God's blessing. May God's blessing surround you each day and as you walk his way of suffering love, go in hope, go in peace, go in joy. Amen.